my talk. Here we go. Uh. Ah, he said he living life as a gringo. Where you question, where you fit, and every time you mingle, they say you do this with not enough that. My rapping is really bad. <laughs> this life as a gringo. Yes, hello and welcome to another episode of Life as a Gringo. I am Dramos, of course. And man, we're coming off of Valentine's Day. Hope y'all, you know, if you have a special someone in your life, you were able to, uh, to spend some time with them. Or if, you know, you are single, you just enjoyed it. You know, as, a, as another day, I've seen a lot of women posting about uh, Galentine's Day, so more power to you. But today's show, it only felt appropriate given that context that we talk about love, right? And I don't just mean love in the sense of like, you know, romantic relationships, but I just think having love in your life, having love for your life, for yourself, for others, you know, that that's the type of love I want to kind of dive into a bit. And obviously romantic love is included in that, but it's a bit inspired uh, by, I don't know, a conversation I had with one of my, my Hoffman classmates. And, and for anybody who is kind of new to the show, I, I did a week long kind of personal growth retreat called the Hoffman process. And, and, you know, it's been a really transformational thing for me. I, I did it at the end of last year, at the end of 2021. And I have a whole new set of classmates that I keep in touch with, you know, and uh, I, I, I'm going to get into a bit of a conversation I had with one of them. I also want to kind of read uh, this, this vow. So they, they make us kind of take this vow to ourselves, right, of how we're going to lead our lives post process after we leave the process and i'm gonna read you what mine was my my vow was i vow to live life as my authentic self led by love and curiosity and that's an incredibly powerful sentence for me it takes me back to where i was when i created that that vow for myself and it's just a reminder of of how i want to live my life you know moving forward at the time that i have left here on this earth and obviously one of the key words in there is, is love right i want to lead a life that is led by love so i want to dive into a bit of of what exactly that means, you know, what happens to our brain when we find the things and the people that we love, right? Our passions in this life, the things that speak to our souls, the people that that touch our hearts. It's more than just something, you know, we can put on a, a, a greeting card or or sum up in some sort of grandiose gift, but something actually does happen to our body when we are in a state of, of love and in a state of being led by love. And I want to also touch on the opposite of that, you know, being led by anger. You know, I was definitely led by that for a long time in my life when it comes to my my career, you know, and being led by resentment and the idea that I'll show you, you know, that type of attitude. I want to touch on that a, a bit as well, because I think there's kind of this unspoken negative reaction that happens to that that I think a lot of people, myself included until recently, you know, aren't really aware of. So we'll dive into all that. Of course, I'll have a, a question for, for y'all to chime in on for, for our Ask a Gringo segment. I'll also touch on a, a few people that I want to use as examples to maybe leaning on that anger a bit too much. And I'll also kind of give you my own personal experience of kind of transforming what I use to, to motivate me. But first, I kind of want to do a little bit of a deep dive into some of the science behind the feelings of love and what happens in our brains and our bodies when we are surrounded by the things and the people that we love. And of course, we'll do that in a segment we call for the people in the back. Say a lot for the people in the back. So I want to start things off with a quote from from Neil deGrasse Tyson. And, and the quote is the most successful people in life recognize that in life they create their own love. They manufacture their own meaning. They generate their own motivation. And I, I love that that quote. And I, we're kind of overusing the word love at this point. But I, I really admire that that quote because I just find it to resonate so much with with kind of what we're talking about. And I dive into an article as well that has some kind of scientific uh, findings from various studies. But this idea that we create our own love, right, and we manufacture our own meaning and and that we generate our own motivation, right, and love is kind of being at the center of it. And again, I'm not just talking about in the romantic sense, but I'm talking about finding the thing in this life that you truly love, right, the passion that you have in this life or or even why it's so effective, you know, when people get dogs and it's, it's often a life changing experience or, or having kids or things like that. Right. Bringing things into this world that you love. And then obviously the relationship side of that 
is a big part of as well. Why we feel so incredible when we find somebody that we we truly love, you know, like to me, when you when you really kind of break it all down, that that is what life is all about. It's it's about that that love, right? Like that really is to me what makes the world go round. It, it's it's what gets us out of bed in the morning, you know, even if it's indirectly, right? Even if it's you know getting out of bed in the morning because you have to support the people that you love, right? You have to support yourself, you know. And even when you talk about yourself, this idea of self love, to me, it's more than just this like hokey campfire type of type of thing for you know this hokey kind of corny campfire kumbaya type shit you know and, and honestly i i saw the idea of self-love uh, you know being one of those things as well but when you realize you know what actually happens when you truly begin to appreciate and love yourself it's really like you're keeping out a lot of those dark thoughts like if you have a bad day you make a mistake whatever the case may be when you have that ability to have compassion for yourself i.e have love for yourself the day doesn't seem all that bad, right? The, the thing that you fucked up doesn't seem all that bad. It's like everything that we have going on in our lives, good or bad, can either be made better or worse by the amount of love that we show and give ourselves. And and in this conversation that we're having today, I'm going to interchange love and passion and and all that because to me, it's it's all kind of the same thing. You know, it's all things that are coming essentially from, from our heart. Now, I'm pulling this article from psychcentral.com and the, the title of it is The Motivated Mind, Where Passion and Creativity Come From. And I'm going to read a, a couple excerpts from it. And they're talking about a study that was published in the Journal of Neuroscience that identified the part of the brain that is activated during motivated activities. And they say, quote, so that feeling of intense creativity or that feeling of euphoria when engaging in something that is truly meaningful to you, it is real and it is something psychological that happens within your brain. It is one of the least researched aspects of psychology, yet it has the biggest impact on our own personal lives. Motivation does not simply give you the energy to work, but it allows you to but it allows but allows you to entirely change your perception of everything that you do. Conversely, your change in perception will start to affect the types of long term behavior in which you engage. And I'm kind of skipping around the article, but I want to touch on something they also said when they talk about these studies that they had. They say, quote, passion is what moves you to persevere at something despite fear, unhappiness or pain. It is the determination and motivation to push through suffering for the sake of an end goal. What is more, this kind of motivation has an actual source in the brain. So th those are kind of the two paragraphs that stuck out to me when I'm, I'm reading this article. And I, I want to focus on a, on a few parts of it. Right. And again, for me, for this conversation, we're interchanging the words love and passion, because to me, it's kind of one and the same in the context that we're talking about. But them saying that, you know, mentally and, and actually scientifically being proven that your passion allows you to persevere through incredibly difficult things, you know, things that make you scared, things that bring unhappiness or pain, as they said. And it's because that passion gives you an end goal to keep in mind. Right. And and I, we've talked about the idea of people kind of, you know, really change their lives when they have kids and things like that. And, and it's kind of the same thing. I mean, think about, you know, what you'll go through for somebody that you love. You know what I mean? Like what uncomfortable position you'll put yourself in if it means helping the person that you love, the people that you love in this life. You know, the difference between a stranger asking for you for something and then the person that you love asking for the same exact thing. Shit, even the growing pains of like, you know, uh, a relationship, you know, when you're going through the ups and downs of, of a relationship, but it's that love that you have for one another that keeps you pushing through those tough times and, and the, the points where the growth feels incredibly difficult. And then kind of moving on to what they talk about when it comes to you know, perceptions, right? I think a lot of us, I've said this a million one times, we've all heard it, and we're all probably keenly aware of it, that we're so much harder on ourselves than we would be on on others, you know, on strangers, on the people that we love. And that's where I, I start talking about this idea of, of, of self love, you know, it's like so many situations that we find ourselves in, you know, we make them that much more difficult, because we have an inability to show empathy for ourselves, we have an inability to show the amount of compassion and, and love that we need to have for ourselves to make it through certain moments without them being, you know, incredibly detrimental to our mental health or to our day. But if you're but kind of what things like this study show, you know, if you're able to begin to develop that unconditional self love for yourself, your perception of your failures and your difficult times will begin to change. And man, I think the more I, I think about it, the more I, I, I kind of study, you know, people's thoughts on what the meaning of life is and and how to make it through life and all these self-help type of ideals these self-improvement type of ideals i think a lot of it is is like tricks to force our brain to see things a different way and i mean that in like a positive way you know 
And, and I think that goes both ways, right? Like we can force ourselves to think that we are failures, you know, that we are, are not successful. You know what I mean? Like I have this constant struggle with myself. My girl and I had, had this like check in with each other with some, some Valentine's Day thing she pulled up when we were eating dinner over the weekend. And it was just like questions to ask your partner. And, and one of them, I think, in, I'm paraphrasing with something like, um, what's one thing about your partner that they don't realize, you know, and, and what she kind of said to me paraphrasing here is like, I don't think you realize how much you've achieved and how successful you actually are. And that's like a level of self love I'm still struggling with. and I'm just beginning to kind of get better at right. But I don't love myself enough in my current state to admit that I've succeeded. You know what I mean? And granted, obviously, there's always higher and higher levels of achievement. But the reality is like I have a lot to appreciate myself for, you know, I I've created an incredible life for myself where I get to do what I want on a daily basis. You know, I get to set my schedule every day. I get to work from home. You know, I get to work from the home that I own, you know, like all of all of these things, all these things I should be loving myself for. But I'm still not viewing myself as somebody, you know, worthy of, of that title of, of success just yet. Right. And it's something again, I'm working towards. I find self-love and compassion for myself easier in other areas than than this one necessarily and i think probably because this was a bit of a motivating factor for me the idea that i told myself it never was enough is kind of what kept me hustling so hard and we're going to get into that a bit as well when we start talking about the flip side of this but i but what i'm kind of trying to get back to is i think that a lot of the tactics around kind of finding happiness and fulfillment is is kind of tricking our brain into having a particular perception right like if we can formulate this idea of of being good enough in our heads right that our lives are amazing that's why things like gratitude practices right reminding yourself about all that you have and all that you appreciate you can begin to create the perception in your brain you know that your life has an incredible amount of abundance that you are incredibly happy that you are incredibly fulfilled you know and your brain and your brain begins to create that perception right and that perception becomes a belief and and that belief allows you to be in fact a happier person and that happiness gives you that energy, right, to keep pushing through the difficult times, right? Gives you the energy to make good on the things that you're, you're striving for, right? I think it, it really comes down to how do we create this perception in our mind and, and create a positive perception in our mind that allows us to continue to push through the difficult times, knowing that at the end of the day, it's for the best, right? Again, I go back now to the, the idea of like a relationship, right? You might get into arguments, and especially as you're really growing in your relationship and you're getting more serious, you know, in your relationship and you're having to figure out how two completely separate people begin to integrate their lives into one another's, you know, you go through those growing pains, right? But that love gives you the motivation to push through the tough times, through the arguments, you know, through the frustrations, because that greater goal that you have in mind of, of loving this person, having a life with this person is worth all of the bullshit that you go through trying to get to know one another and trying to figure out how to build a healthy relationship with one another. And again, that's all love. That's all being led by love. And obviously, this article is talking a bit about motivation and, and finding your passion and things like that. But again, passion and love being interchangeable in this conversation, you talk about what that impacts in the brain. And, and it really does have an actual effect. You know, that's why it's so important you know, to surround yourself around positive people, to be around the people that you love and care about, to be surrounded by things that you love, you know, and, and being able to practice uh, in, in hobbies that you love, you know, because it all gives you that like w those warm and fuzzy feelings. Right. And all that gives you energy at the end of the day. Like, how great do you feel after you've had a conversation with somebody that you care about? Right. Be it a friend, romantically, family or whatever. Like you had a really great conversation. Like, you know, that feeling when you just feel incredibly energized. Right. Like to take on your day. Like that's that's you being led by love at that point. Love is actually activating chemicals in your brain that actually energizes you. Like one thing I do in the morning now is I have a list of like kind of career goals uh, that I'd be really excited to do things that I'm very passionate about. And I meditate on them as if they've already happened. And I give myself that physical feeling of like loving my life, watching these things unfold. And like I feel so energized after that visualization practice that I do. And it's like 10 minutes, but like it's the perfect way to kick off my day. And I just feel so great about myself, so proud of myself, i.e. loving myself. And it makes me so energized going into my day, having to to do whatever task is, a, is ahead of me. And the last thing I'll, I'll talk about when it comes to this article, they, they kind of give us some actionable steps. Right. And again, you can interchange passion and love. And, and, and this doesn't just have to be with finding motivation for the thing that you're passionate about. It, it could be finding love for yourself, all of the above. You can begin to interchange 
you know, kind of all the information. But for this context, they're talking about when it comes to finding your passion, living in your passion. And they have a list coming and say this. They say, quote, this follows the concept of neuroplasticity, the ability to rewire your brain using behavior. According to this prominent, this prominent neuroscientific theory, you have the power to create motivation yourself. And the art of finding this passion in life lies entirely in your actions and your choice of behavior. So you have that internal energy in yourself. You just have to take the right actions. Now, they give us a kind of a, a quick little list over here um, of, of things that are that are helpful as far as actions go. The first thing they list on here is find that for which you have a natural affinity. Music, writing, sports, art, science, whatever the activity it may be, set a certain number of hours aside and completely indulge yourself in it. And this is like the ultimate practice of like self-love, right? Being around things that you love doing in, in this case, right? And I had a, a great weekend doing that uh, this past weekend where I got to, I've been really into like poetry, like spoken word poetry as of, as of like, you know, last few months, but I just haven't had super amount of, a crazy amount of time to really focus on it. But whenever I do, I just feel really energized and like, just really incredible and like in such a flow state as I'm doing it. So this this weekend, you know, on Saturday, I pretty much spent all day doing that. You know, I I wrote a poem. I created like an instrumental. And I was in such a flow state for like hours. And after, and after I was done, I just felt so energized and happy and so full of love. Like I was I was, you know, bursting at the seams and wanting to share this love with, with my girlfriend who was around me. Like I felt incredible because I surrounded myself with something that I, I loved doing. The next thing they list in here is reject complacency. Complacency suggests a defeated approach in accepting your current circumstances. In constantly challenging yourself to be better and do better, you allow yourself to explore exciting new possibilities. And I, I love this. And I think, you know, for me, when I go back to like what my mission statement was, my vow coming out of the Hoffman process, it, it was important to create like an, a verb when I said a life led, right? Led, that's an actionable step, led by love, meaning it, I was actively doing something right i was actively moving forward in my life and allowing love to lead me down whatever path it decides right and that's like the antithesis of complacency i'm taking action i'm not sitting back and just allowing the same thing to happen over and over again no i'm saying i'm going to allow my love the love that i have in this life be it for people or for my passions my career my hobbies my my interests i'm going to allow those things and those people to, to take my hand and lead me. And again, that's the antithesis of complacency. I'm taking action based upon what's moving me, what's in my heart. The last step they, they list is ask the question why. The self-help staple of affirming yourself by telling yourself that I, quote, I can do it, quote, I will go to the gym today, I will work on my book tonight, is ineffective. In the science of self-motivation, studies show that asking yourself whether you will do something enables you to get better results. So instead of I will read tonight. Ask yourself, will I read tonight? Professor Dolores Albuquerque from the U from the University of Illinois suggests that in asking a question, people were more likely to reflect on what the activity means to them and thus build their own motivation doing it. And I got to admit, I don't do this on a regular basis, but when I have like when I've gone through, you know, moments where I'm like, oh, what does any of this matter? Who the fuck cares type of thing? And then I remind myself, why am I doing this? And essentially asking myself, why am I doing this? It does tend to kind of wake my ass up and get me, you know, off my ass and go do the thing that I've been procrastinating on or remind me of why I'm putting so much effort into something. So this this makes sense. I'm going to read the the final part of this this, this uh, blog that they have. It says, uh, quote, there are very few people in this world who would shun the idea of success and fulfillment. As we are constantly told, we can only really succeed by doing what we love. The science is simple. When you enjoy something, you have a natural tendency to work at it and become better at it. By doing so, you are effectively building new neural connections that keep multiplying as you keep working. The bottom line in finding motivation is never to betray yourself and what you love. So instead of reciting empty affirmations, ask yourself the question, will I take what I just read and implement it into my life or what you just heard for the sake of this podcast? But I love this, this, this line that they had in here. It says the bottom line in finding motivation is never to betray yourself and what you love. Man, that that's so incredibly deep, right? Betray yourself and and what you love. And again, all interchangeable, whether it's a person or your job or your hobby or the thing you're passionate about in your life and also yourself, right? This idea of betraying yourself because that's what you are doing when you're not participating in leading a life led by love and leading a life that is full of love and not loving yourself. You are betraying yourself, right? And then not showing up for the people that you care about 
you're betraying the the people that you love or the you're not showing up for your your goal that you have, you know, your passion, you're betraying that thing that you love. It's like you get a phone call from the person you love most in this world and they're telling you, you know, they're in need of dire help and you're the only person who can save them. Like if you truly love that person, are you just going to kind of sit on the couch and be like, ah, maybe I'll get to it? No, you're going to run your ass out of the house, right? Like doesn't matter what you're wearing, how crazy you look. You're going to hop in the car and get to wherever you need to get to to help that person that you love. So why should it be any differently when you're talking about yourself and finding the motivation to do the things that you're passionate about, do the things that might be uncomfortable or difficult, but at the end of the day, will get you to where you want to go. And also finding ways to be easy on yourself during the hard times and have your own back, right? That's that's a huge thing as well. Don't betray yourself. Like, like find a way to have your own back, no matter how bad that you mess up, no matter how difficult the, the the thing you're going through is, no matter how much you know you don't feel like you are good enough in a particular situation. Like, never betray yourself. Make sure you dig deep and keep finding that love for yourself to pull yourself out of those out of any difficult situation. You know, you have to have your own back in this life. Man, with that said, I want to get into some some examples as far as maybe the opposite of this and kind of give you some of my own personal takes as far as you know, things I've gone through in life and 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 how I've kind of dealt with them. And we'll do that in our Mijente segment. But first, let's take a quick break and we'll be right back. Mijente. All right. So I want to talk about kind of more of the idea of, of, of motivation, you know, you know, kind of piggybacking off of what we were talking about in our last segment. But I think oftentimes you hear people talk about, you know, they've allowed their anger to to kind of give them that motivation to get out of bed in the morning, right? They picture the people that, that didn't believe in them, right? That may have shunned them or stabbed them in the back. They use that to light that fire inside of them to to do great things, right? And I, and I was one of those people. And, and, and to a degree, I think I still am uh, in certain aspects of my life, you know, it's still a work in progress. But I, I realized, you know, at this point in my life, Allowing the anger to lead me, allowing the resentment to lead me, allowing those feelings of trying to prove to somebody that I'm good enough, you know, allowing those feelings to lead me, they never end up giving me all that I thought they would, right? And and to be completely honest, like I've made most of my career trying to show people up, right? But whether it's my parents, whether it's former coworkers, whatever that the case may be, friends that that talk shit on me, you know, anybody that was a naysayer, a hater. Like I use all of that as motivation to get what I wanted out of this life to to get me to to you know push myself a little bit harder you know to to stretch a little bit a little bit longer you know to get shit done you know and and it's worked to a degree right like I'm sitting here with all that I have you know primarily because of that right but the thing that I realize is you know and I've had moments sitting in this house you know my by myself this house that really represents you know the the man, what, 15 years of, of hard work that I've gone through in, in the music industry. I've had so many moments sitting in this house where I just felt incredibly empty and unfulfilled and depressed and anxious, right? And I and I begin to, to kind of realize that, you know, much of that anger that you use to kind of ignite that fire and to to motivate you to, to push harder, you know, while it's powerful in getting you to where you want to be, it's also powerful in in holding you down as well, right? Because the reality is, where does that anger end up going once you you complete that goal, right? It doesn't just magically disappear into thin air because you got that goal. And, and maybe, I, and, and to be honest, a part of me thought that it would, right? But the truth is, that person that you were looking to prove wrong, that you were looking to show up, like, you often don't have, like, that face-to-face -face moment, you know, where they admit that they're wrong. Like, that, that rarely ever happens in this life, you know? So you don't get that that real thing you're looking for of like knowing that you showed that that person they admit that they're wrong and, and, and all of the above right and you can move on with your life so you're, you're kind of still stuck in this mode of, of kind of like wondering when that moment's going to happen and then you kind of convince yourself okay you know what i achieve this maybe if i achieve this next thing then i'll get that that moment from that person that'll really show them and that ends up being like this never-ending cycle and then you just continue living on with that anger inside of you and I know this isn't just a me thing. And I, I, I talked about a conversation I was having with one of my classmates from Hoffman. And we were talking about the idea of people like Michael Jordan or Tiger Woods. And I'm going to specifically talk about Michael Jordan here, right? But because, it, because you look at people like Michael Jordan who have obviously been motivated by the haters, by the naysayers, right? Like 
You look at like Michael Jordan, you know, arguably the greatest basketball player of all time, one of the greatest professional athletes of all time, if not the greatest. But like Michael would invent villains within the game, right? Like how many times we've seen that meme from the uh, the 30 for 30 that they did, you know, of the last dance where he's saying, I took it personal, right? And people are like, what the fuck? Like it was like the tiniest thing in the world. And he made it something personal to motivate himself to, you know, push himself that much harder in the game and drop that many more points, right? But then when you what you begin to recognize is when you look at Michael Jordan's life and, and his career, the man again, gets all of the admiration from everybody. Everybody gives him his props. You know, like he is the GOAT, has the rings to prove it. But like, look at look at his his life. I mean, let's look at the Hall of Fame speech that he gave, right? Like it was kind of a weirdly like dark Hall of Fame speech. It was like he was still holding on to so many different grudges that he had from his his playing career, right? Ryan Holiday mentions this in his book, Stillness is the Key. You know, and uh, I can't remember the exact story he was talking about, but just referencing like here's this guy who literally is is like the greatest to ever do it in his his sport, you know, and and nobody's really arguing that. But he still is holding on to the anger that obviously fueled him to, to be so damn competitive. And then look at his personal life. You know, his marriage falls apart. He's like a degenerate gambler. You know, it's like he he constantly keeps getting in his own way in certain points because it's like, um, and obviously I don't know the man. I don't know, you know, I'm not a fucking Michael Jordan uh, historian or anything like that. But just from the the outside looking in, you know, from a very kind of shallow type of level. But like for somebody as amazing as Michael Jordan, it doesn't really seem like he's all that happy, right? So all the money, all the recognition, uh, you know, rising to the the top level of your given passion. And he still doesn't strike me as an incredibly happy person. And when you hear him talk about certain things, you realize he still doesn't let go of so much diff- so many different things. And then that, to me, that lends itself to my point of that anger can only take you but so far, right? It might help you achieve some of those goals. It might help you, you know, get to, to certain uh, places that you wanted to go. But once you get there, that anger doesn't just magically disappear, right? It oftentimes stays with you. And, and when it stays with you, it lingers on your body and in your life and it convinces you that you need to find something else, that you need to, you know, achieve that next level, that next level, that next level. And it's this never ending cycle of just trying to prove something, even when you're somebody like Michael Jordan, who literally has zero to prove to anybody. Right. And I feel that very much so in my heart that like the life led by anger, which, again, I have done that. That was my motivating factor that shit doesn't just magically disappear, right? Like, like I really had to come to terms with that. And I'm glad I, I did because that, that anger that I had for people like my parents, that resentment that I had, that affected our relationship. And, and me not having a relationship with my parents would have affected my quality of life. I mean, it was, you know, I, I think about my life right now and having come to terms and forgiveness with them and, and, and no longer using them as a motivating factor for what I do. Like, I cherish the time that I spend with my parents. You know, I see my parents at least once a week and I love it. I look forward to it. It re-energizes me. You know, it makes me happy. I talk to my mom every single day on the phone. It's a beautiful, beautiful thing. You know what I mean? And and thankfully, I was able to let go of that. Or I wouldn't have that relationship that I have with them. And that would be incredibly sad. And, and to be honest, you know, I'm still like picking up the pieces of like realizing I'm still leading myself with with anger, you know in certain areas of my life. You know, I mean, I recently was up for, you know, a really big kind of kind of gig in my industry. And I was journaling the other morning and I I, I kind of had this like come to Jesus moment where it was like, yo, you're you're so obsessed with this gig and this opportunity and and what it means if it happens only because what it represents to the people who doubted you. Right. Like this, this gig, getting it would prove all of them wrong, would shut everybody up. And that's why you're so fucking obsessed with it, right? And once I realized that, and, and once I realized that I wasn't coming from a, a place of, of love and, and, and ultimately my own happiness as to why I was so obsessed with getting this gig, it was like this fucking giant weight was, was lifted off of my shoulders. You know what I mean? Like, I was able to let it go. And, and I'm not trying to give too much of a backstory because it's like an ongoing thing, but like, you know, I've been been working at this this one gig and, and been in talks with them for for a while now. And it's something that became like my obsession. And, and I began planning my life, you know, what what my life would look like if I got it. And and I've been like obsessively checking emails and things like that. 
And and once I had that moment with myself while I was journaling, like all of that emotional attachment that I had to it was gone. And I just felt so much better, you know, and 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 like it didn't have this hold over me anymore. It didn't have this negative stranglehold any over me anymore. And and that's when you realize, man, like that that anger, that that resentment that I'm holding on to to prove my haters wrong, it's costing me my my day to day happiness, right? Because here I am living a, a life that by all definitions, by my own definition, is amazing, right? Is is legitimately everything that makes me happy. I get to spend time walking my dog. I get to do whatever I want. Like I don't have a a you know a crazy schedule anymore where I have to be somewhere at a specific time every single day and my life revolves around that job. Like, nah, like I really have the freedom to do whatever the fuck I want for the most part. And I'm sitting here not happy with it telling myself it's not good enough because I'm hanging on to that anger and resentment that I have for the haters who are talking shit because I'm not successful by their definition. Like, how crazy does that does that sound? I'm allowing other people's definition of success and what what it means to be good enough. I'm allowing them to define my own happiness in the present moment. That's no way to live. And I refuse to live that way anymore. But that's that that thing I realized, you know, it was that that anger that I was using to to motivate myself to to push myself to do more and to prove all these people wrong. That shit was just sticking onto me and blinding me from seeing everything that was in front of me. And love doesn't do that, right? Being led by the things that truly move you, that speak to your heart, like they that doesn't leave you feeling heavy and foggy. You know what I mean? Like these last like two weeks where I've really not been sucked in by those feelings of wanting to prove people wrong, I felt amazing. I mean, I listen, it's not perfect. Of course, there's other things going on in life, but like I'm appreciating like, man, like every day I'm I'm waking up and I'm doing things that I love doing. And like it might not be glamorous, but shit, it makes me happy. Like and and that's such an incredible feeling. And that's love leading me, right? That's me doing things. I'm not here to impress nobody anymore. I'm here to to do shit that actually speaks to me at this point in my life. You know, it might not be, you know, as glamorous as some of the things that I was doing before, but that that's that's a, a a version of myself that no longer fits me. You know what I mean? It's an operating system that is obsolete when it comes to me and this point in my life. And love is allowing me to move past that without, you know, missing it. It is allowing me to move past that without feeling like I've let some outside person down or that I've given you know somebody ammo to talk about me love is allowing me to ignore that and truly just live in this beautiful present moment that i have right now with all the things that i enjoy doing and and all the people that i i truly care about and that's allowing me to feel fulfillment even when i'm not necessarily crossing things off of my bucket list you know what i mean when i'm even when i'm not crossing things off of that that list of goals that i have you know what i mean like of course i still am motivated to achieve those things and one day cross them off but I don't have to wait until I do that to feel fulfilled and happy. And I think that's the point that I'm trying to get at here, you know, is the love allows you to feel that happiness and fulfillment, even if you don't cross that thing off of your 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 to-do list. You know what I mean? Even if you don't knock that goal down, you know, it still allows you to enjoy the the process and the whole path there. And that's the main difference. Anger doesn't allow you to do that. Anger is only satisfied when you have something to rub in, in, in another person's face. And even then, it only quenches its thirst for a very limited period of time. And then it looks for that next thing. Love is just like this even keel, ongoing thing that never fails you. And that's what you should be striving to, to be led by in this life. And I hope I didn't go off on the deep end and lose anybody there. I, I kind of have a stream of consciousness as I'm, as I'm saying this, as I typically do with the, with the podcast. I'm just recognizing how beautiful that is and how profound it is to, to just be surrounded by love and and you know design your life in a way that surrounds you by love because again it's all by design just like that study said we have those choices to to make in this life and to to create that perception in our brain that allows us to to see the love even in the hardest times so man just something to to keep in mind Oof, with that said let's um let's hear from y'all in our ask a gringo segment i want to know uh, your take on a particular question when it comes to love before that, though, we'll take a quick break and we'll be right back. Ask a gringo. Uh, I have a question. 
All right, y'all. So if you're new here at DJ Dramos on Instagram, I ask a question for each and every show to get y'all involved. I want to hear y'all's opinion on some of the topics that we're talking about. For today's show, the question that I asked y'all was, what is something slash someone you love that keeps you going? How or why? And we're going to read a few here that I got. Let's see. Uh, at Roja Lego says, my boyfriend, he's always pushing me to do better slash want more when I doubt myself. And I absolutely love that, not to be redundant, but I think that's incredibly important. I think my girlfriend is exactly the same way. I try to be that for her. And that's just like a perfect physical example of surrounding yourself with love, right? It is being around somebody who truly cares for you and loves you unconditionally, you know, it means having that support system, right? In those moments where you feel lesser than, where you can't pick yourself up, you know, that person is there to remind you of all that you're doing, all that you're you're incredible at and how hard you're working and how great you're doing, even if you can't see it for yourself in that moment, you know, and that's the the type of support system that comes from surrounding yourself with people that you you love. And it's just an incredible, incredible thing. Let's see. At Menita Menyao says, doubt. When someone doubts my capabilities, it fuels my fire to prove them wrong. And I'm glad that, and I think obviously we touched on this when it comes to letting the anger lead you. And I think, listen, to a degree, you're absolutely right. I mean, obviously, all of that stuff, you know, when somebody doubts you, says something negative about you, it definitely lights that fire to, to kind of push you to, to keep going and give you that motivation. Again, you know, like I was saying in the last segment, though, it's just something to be mindful of about not allowing that to be the sole thing, you know, not allowing that to, to overcome you, you know, because the reality is you're never really going to prove somebody completely wrong, right? Like, even if, no matter if you, you know, contradict everything that they say about you like they're going to go on with their life right and they're probably going to find something new to talk shit about when it comes to you right i can say that when it comes to certain people in my life like doesn't matter how much i achieve they're always going to find something negative you know to to say about you i can remember some of like the dj friends that i had coming up you know as i was coming up talking shit about some of the opportunities i was getting right and then when it became obvious that like you know, and them comparing themselves like, oh, you know, I could do that if I blah, blah, blah. Right. And like all everything. Right. And even after I kept proving them wrong and, and climbing ahead of them and climbing further ahead and further and further ahead, like they still found some new thing that they would invent in their mind that they would talk shit about. Right. Like I remember playing my first like festival in front of a sea of people. And and I saw I ran into that person at a wedding. I don't know if I mentioned this before. I think I talked about my vlog, but like I I ran to that person at a wedding and he was like, man, I saw that picture of you, you know. He's let me ask some, was that real or fake? Because I didn't look at the crowd was looking at you. And it's like, bro, you've never even stepped foot in front of that many people. You know what I mean? Let alone are doing any of the things I'm doing. But that's what I mean. Like, even as I prove that person wrong, quote unquote, in my head, they still found something new and negative to say about me. So what made me go back to the drawing board of like, OK, well, that wasn't good enough. Fuck you. I'm going to go and make something twice as big as that. And it never ends. Right. At the end of the day, that never ends. You never truly get that satisfaction that you're you're looking for or hoping for. A hater is always going to find something new about you to hate, even if you're mile, mile, even if you're miles and miles ahead of them. It doesn't really matter. So that's why the only healthy way to like find that that fire for yourself is to do it for yourself and the things that you you truly love, because that will never leave you feeling empty. You know what I mean? Like yourself is always going to because that is all that matters at the end of the day, making yourself feel good. You're never going to change the heart of a, a hater or a naysayer. Because he adds, Bren J, life coach in the homie, she says, courage, because all the people I love and admire have it, ancestors included. Without it, we wouldn't be here. I definitely wouldn't be here in this country. I love that. That's beautiful, you know. Having a love for, for courage and appreciation for courage, you know, that's like a huge way to kind of shift your perception in like a scary moment where you might be doubting yourself. You know what I mean? Like, because at that point, you psych yourself up because you're getting hype when you're like, yo, I really, you know, I'm give, I'm having the courage to push past all this, this hardship. You know what I mean? And like when you love that, when you love the fact that you're pushing past and you're having a courageous moment, like what can really stop you at that point? You psych your mind up to find the joy in 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 the fact that you're courageous enough to face something that you're scared of. Right. It doesn't matter what the outcome is at that point. It doesn't matter what the thing you're scared of is like the fact that you're finding joy in facing it like how do you defeat somebody who's who's loving facing a scary thing like you can't scare that person back into hiding when they're appreciating courage at that point right that's such a beautiful thing 
And last one I'll, I'll read is, uh, I know a, lot, a few people said um, kids, but let's see. At Elizabeth underscore ZR says, my daughters, everything that I do is for them so that they have better than I had. And that's like the ultimate, like letting love lead you type shit, right? Like passion, something bigger than yourself, right? I feel like kids equate to all of the the above, the greatest motivating factor I can imagine, you know, our, our children, people that are depending on you for their own their own livelihood, you know, and and wanting to not only provide them with, you know, the, the minimum that they need, but also giving them more than you had. Like that is such a rewarding goal, right? And and that really is leading with love, right? Everything you do, the hardships, like love is pulling you through because it's all worth it when you put a smile on that kid's face, when you see that kid having more of a life than you ever had, you know, being able to enjoy their time as a child more than you were able to. You know what I mean? Like that will get you through all of those difficult fucking times, you know, and and it will it will keep being and it will be the reward that keeps on giving, right? Because that goes on for, you know, the entirety of, of, of your life and their life. You know what I mean? You can sit back and and witness all that you you sacrifice to to give them. And it just keeps on repaying you when you look at, you know, all the the amazing things that they end up doing with their their lives as, as the days go on. So, man, that's so beautiful and such a great great example of just allowing love to be the thing that that leads you and gets you through the tough times man thank y'all for sharing with me again at dj dramos if you want to be a part of these conversations let's wrap it all up though now it's that time put everything in a nice neat little bow in a segment we call conclusion stew time for conclusion stew Man, I feel like I dived into to most of it and I feel like there was a stream of consciousness that I had that I will not be able to recreate. I just think, you know, kind of like I said, the biggest takeaway is that it's all about perception, right? It's all about the way that your mind sees the world and sees its everyday life. And the beauty of that is you are completely in control of that. You can train your brain to view things a certain way, right? You can create those neurological pathways through practice and through discipline to see the world in a particular way. And it all starts with love. If you choose to look for love in everything that you do and allow love to be the thing that that leads you when it comes to making your decisions, you're going to begin to craft an incredibly fulfilled and amazing life. And one that gives you the strength tenacity to make it through all of the difficult times, right? Because you'll always keep in mind what's at stake and what's on the other side. And that's a life that was crafted by the things that are naturally in your heart. It's all about love, man. I love it. It's all about love. What a beautiful, beautiful thing. I'm telling you, love is freeing, man. It's, it's such a beautiful, beautiful feeling. Make yourself more conscious of, of like the anger that's fueling you and, and what's actually fueling you. And when you are able to start to let let go of those things and realize that it's not actually something that is serving you, but more so to to serve others in the form of proving them wrong. Once you're able to start letting go of that and just focus on what truly makes you happy, regardless of what anybody else thinks, man, that's when you're going to begin to have those those moments of fulfillment and happiness on a regular basis for no real apparent reason. You're not going to have to wait until you're checking some sort of goal off the list. You're just going to feel it, that love in your heart each and every day, knowing that you're guided by the things and the people that truly matter. Now, with that said, thank you all so much for tuning in to another episode. I appreciate you. If you haven't yet, I know we've got some new listeners. If you could leave us a review on Apple Podcasts, you know, a little five-star review, leave a, a nice little comment in there. I would greatly appreciate it. It really helps out with editorials and all that kind of stuff. Helps us grow the podcast when it comes to pitching it to, to get more eyeballs, you know, to get more ears on it. This is something that I think is incredibly important, the conversations that we're, we're having. You know, I know I do my best to, to add value to our community. So, I think it's something that more of our community needs to hear. Share it with a friend if you agree. Again, leaving all those reviews and everything really does help us out. I know it seems stupid, but people look at that kind of stuff. So you really be doing me a solid if you do so. And I'm going to be giving away a gringo hat. So uh, leave a review, screenshot it, and DM it to me on Instagram. And I will answer you in for a chance to win a gringo hat. I appreciate y'all again, man. Y'all are the absolute best. 
And I'll catch y'all on Thursday for our Thursday Trends episode. I'll talk to y'all then. Peace.